Well, nothing's new. I have been procrastinating on this video as usual. Anyways, here I am finally with my non-review review of Haven't You Heard? I'm Sakamoto. So, let's dip right into this, shall we? So, Haven't You Heard? I'm Sakamoto is a 12-episode comedy anime by Studio Dean. Damn, Studio Dean. I... That name just hasn't been relevant in a long time. Anyways, it's licensed by Sentai Filmworks, and the creator has noted with his uh, design for the character of Sakamoto himself that he took a lot of inspirations from the character Bayonetta. And it's pretty obvious with the mole under the left eye and the silky black hair and the slender figure. Yeah, it looks like Bayonetta. I can see where it is. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they obviously can't say anything about like him being in relation to Bayonetta, they can't make that part of the story, but you can definitely see that the creator probably was a fan of Bayonetta. And why wouldn't he be? I was a fan of Bayonetta. Haven't played Bayonetta 2, just need to get a Wii U, but whatever. Uh, anyways, on to the anime. Now, this anime took me back a bit. You see, when I watch a show, uh, an anime where its express purpose is to be comedic, and to be funny. It's usually not comedic. It's usually not very funny. I don't usually laugh very often. Uh, but this anime actually had me <laughs> splitting my sides a couple times with just some of the ridiculous shit that happens. Um, this anime... Yeah, it's... I, I'm gonna probably... I don't... Uh, I'm gonna be using visuals. I don't want to spoil too much of the comedic aspect of this anime. I don't want to spoil too many of the things that happen because that will ruin some of the surprise, but... <laughs> I'm going to anyways, so just brace yourself for uh, spoilers ahead. I guess this is a spoiler warning. Now, one of the perks of this being more of a non-review review, uh, a final impressions as I will call it, because non-review review, review kind of just sounds a little, a little weird, um, one of those perks being is I'm not really taking a very big objective stance on the way I look at shows. I'm not even trying to be objective, this is 100% uh, my biased opinion on the show. It is 100% just what I thought of it. And that's kind of good now, because uh, comedy is one of those things that is just 100%. Jesus, so many 100%. Uh, it, it's basically all subjective. If you find something funny, that is all up to you. Now, there have been you know, common grounds, you know, there have been common, you know, things that have made people, uh, humor has been categori categorized, oh man, fucking terrible at semantics, because this is unscripted, that's why, but, uh, comedy is one of those things where, even though it has been categorized, and it has been given, like, you know, particular genres like a stoner flick, or a slapstick comedy, or intelligent humor, <laughs> hoity-toity, um, it's still always one of those things where jokes will just, will either fall flat with people, or they'll land and they'll stick the landing, it, it's, it all doesn't matter, you're always gonna have, you know, somebody laugh in the theater when nobody else is laughing, and you're always gonna have that one person who doesn't laugh when everybody's laughing, who, somebody who's just there like, this just isn't funny, or sometimes the audience will be completely divided, and, that's one of the reasons why it's so hard to tackle humor objectively. Now, you can always pick apart, you know, you can attack cliches and you can tell when they're going the easy route, like, oh, they made a fart joke or, you know, something like that. You can always pick that apart, but for the most part, humor is completely subjective. A, a comedy could have, like, a fucking 30% on Rotten Tomatoes or some shit, or whatever is relevant now, I don't know, and you could, you might think it is just the most hilarious movie ever. I have laughed at movies, I have laughed a shit ton at movies that have been panned critically, but I thought were hilarious. The Vacation, for example, uh, with, it was either Jason Sudeikis, or I think it was Jason Sudeikis, wasn't it, or Ed Helms, it was one of the two Jesus Christ, <laughs> those two get mixed up so much, um, but it was one of the two, in Vacation, it was, that movie had me fucking laughing my ass off, especially the little kid, he kind of got sidelined, but he was the funniest part of that movie, a lot of people probably think he was annoying, but there was, there was that moment when he took that plastic bag and <laughs> he fucking threw it over his older brother's face, <laughs> suffocating him, I know it's awful, but I just fucking died, um, 
But that's why I'm glad I'm doing it sort of like this. Of course, this also means since it's unscripted, there's literally no limits, and I'll probably talk, be talking forever. Most review, most videos of mine that go on for like 10 plus minutes are unscripted. It's just one of those things, with the exception of reviews. Um, so, anyways, uh, on to the actual show itself. Um, once again, it was by Studio Dean. Uh, the character Sakamoto makes this show. You know, they, they do this little intro scene sequence where uh, this narrator is expressing what Sakamoto is like, and he uses these t the terms cool, cooler, and coolest to describe him, that he's just cool, cooler, coolest. He's stylish. He's stylish when he's eating lunch. He's stylish when he's out in the hallway. He's stylish even when he's taking it up the ass. That never happened in the anime. Um, he's stylish. He's so fucking cool, too. Like, they, they base the entire anime and its humor off this idea that he is just this otherworldly person. Like, he's crazy. He's so cool. Everybody loves him. Everything he does is awesome. And it's so fucking true. Everything he does is fucking awesome. There are so many scenes in this anime that are hilarious, but at the same time, they express just how amazing he is. And that's kind of the point. The point behind its hu humor is how amazing he is. And, you know, usually this type of premise would not stick the landing for me, but this time it kind of did. So many hilarious moments that I can cite off the top of my head, like the moment when this guy's trying to make him look stupid, so he tries pulling the chair out from underneath of him, and he fucking... He, he literally is sitting on air. He's holding himself up with his fucking leg. He's even got his... He's even cr got his legs... His uh, leg crossed over his right... His left leg crossed over his right leg. It's ridiculous, but it's fucking awesome. I knew what was gonna happen. Doesn't... That didn't take anything away from it, though. Um... There's so many crazy moments. There's this moment in the anime where this mom of his friend is basically in love with him because he reminds her of a Korean drama actor or some shit. And she, he, he's pretended not to be there. The son per told his mom that he's not there, but then she caught a whiff of him, essentially, and was like, oh, he's here, sakamoto -kun! And she's, like, searching for him and shit, and there was moments where he's, like, up in the fucking ceiling, like, Batman, like, a uh, Batfleck and, uh, Batman v Superman, and I was just died, I died laughing. I was laughing my fucking tits off. I guess what could be attributed to the humor is, for some reason, it reminded me a lot of School Rumble, and I really, really loved School Rumble. Although the difference is, even though the main character of School Rumble, uh, Harima, wow, I can't believe I remember his name. If I remember characters' names after all this time, then that is a good, that can be attributed to uh, how well I liked the show. Oh man, I fucking love School Rumble. But anyways, there was times, the Harima was a really cool character, but the thing was, he was also really flawed. He was kind of like the opposite of Sakamoto. Both Harima and Sakamoto are touted as these really awesome characters, and both of them work the same while being completely different. Like, one is uh, essentially an incredibly flawed character, while the other one is essentially flawless. Cool. Cooler. And the coolest. <laughs> Fucking Sakamoto is dope, and if this character didn't work, the anime wasn't going to work. Now, like I said, the end, it's all subjective. Humor is completely sub subjective. You know that, I'm sure. It's just one of those things where even you may not have found this anime funny, but I was dying laughing the whole time. And that's really all I got to talk about is how much I liked it. That's basically all I'm going to be doing this video. Uh, I'll be dulling out criticisms, but only noticeable criticisms. Um, first of all, bit one being with the animation. Uh, the animation... I didn't know while watching it that it was Studio Dean, but once I watched watched it, it was it was apparent. The animation is not top notch. It's not bad either, but I do have to give them credit. There's a lot of moments, especially with the character of Sakamoto, where they, with his posture and how he moves and how he acts, that really adds that extra element to his character and adds an extra element to the humor. Ugh, burp. Just burped. I'm not going to edit it out. You're going to deal with it. Uh, it really adds to the humor. And they did a good job of portraying the character of Sakamoto and really amplified it. Um, his very Bayonetta-like uh, construction is 
Also, another thing, I guess just knowing that the creator liked Bayonetta helped me like this anime because I felt like I had something in common with the creator. Um, that being said, that is completely <laughs> uh, different. That is completely unnecessary in, towards the anime as a whole. Just, I don't know, that's just something that I gravitated towards. Um, but yeah, the animation wasn't spectacular, though. Like I said, there was moments with the character's posture and movement. Just the way they amplified the humor with adding uh, overly dramatic, you know, designs to certain aspects and just hilarious, just hilarious shit. And also a lot of it has to be contributed to the original manga as well. Like moments you'll see Sakamoto just like standing in a fucking tree talking to a bird. And just the sight is hilarious. Like I bet reading it was funny too. So this, this anime's humor really hit home with me. Uh, one of the things I was most impressed of by the uh, anime is actually its uh, ability to get you to care. Um, near the... In, actually, not even really near the end. There are certain parts where certain characters are getting their segment. Uh, the episodes are divided into halves. I'll talk about that later. But there are certain moments when characters are getting their particular segment. Like uh, K Yoshinobu or whatever the fuck. His, his best friend character, essentially. The little fat, pudgy dude. Uh, he had a very emotional... Um, episodic segment. It was hilarious, but it was also funny. There are moments near the end that are hilarious, but also funny. Uh, where the show... <laughs> hilarious, but also funny. That didn't make any fucking sense, did it? I mean, heartwarming and also funny. It's one of these things where the show had no business being as heartwarming as it actually was. But there were moments in it where it was heartwarming. Now, I wasn't going to tear up. It's not like I was watching fucking Clan Ad or something. So, I wasn't going to be like, Oh no, that character's going through this traumatic experience. That poor character. I wasn't doing that. I didn't give a shit. I didn't hardly give a shit about anybody other than Sakamoto. But still, there was one character I kind of gravitated towards a little bit. Uh, that was the stalkerish camera picture-taking character, which there was a fucking ghost in that camera. I know that became uh, a thing apparent later, but I took that screen cap before I even knew that the ghost being in that picture was relevant to the plot. I, I just thought that was interesting. I I that ghost freaked me the fuck out the first time I saw it. It was just kind of like, blink and you miss it at first until they pointed it out in the episode, but, uh, it was, I don't know, it was just one of those things, but I gravitated towards that character and felt her plight a little bit, just as somebody who isn't good at conveying feelings of love to people that I know. Now, I'm, I'm a social person. I can talk to people just fine, but when it comes to, like, relationship stuff, I suck ass, okay? Just saying. So I gravita gravitated towards her a little bit, uh, but still, just a lot of funny shit in this anime. Um, any more flaws, dude? Do I, I mean... I guess the purpose of this is if I don't have anything to talk about uh, flaw in regards to being a flaw or something. It's not a real review, so if there's no apparent flaws, I guess I don't really have to talk about them. But I do have one, actually, now that I think about it. I was actually about to talk about it earlier, but I moved on. That's right. The ag the episode's being segmented. It segmented. Um, they're cut in half. Each episode has a first half and a second half that are completely different stories. They're like two separate episodes. I don't know if... I, I can't remember if any of them ever tied into a, each other, uh, but for the most part, they felt like completely different stories. Um, I do not like that model of telling a story. I do not like that very much. I know that it probably has something to do with the way the manga was set up. I first encountered something of that nature in Azumanga Dao. And while funny, um, I didn't, I just don't like that, you know, story structure. Now, comedy isn't always meant to have a linear narrative. A lot of times it is just off moments showing us what's interesting and what's funny. Uh, but still, I, I just don't like that sort of episode, episode structure. And I would have really preferred it without it. But even though that is a big pet peeve of mine when it comes to watching shows, I really hate that formula, that sort of structure of, you know, dividing your episode. Um, even though it does that, the fact that the anime was still able to hold me despite having a major hurdle I had to jump. Um, 
it was it was fairly impressive, and I got to say, I really enjoyed this show. I'm going to be trying to do more of these final impressions. It will help me can give my feelings on uh, shows a whole lot more often without having to make full on full fledged reviews. Uh, don't worry, I will still make reviews. Not that many of you probably care because the reviews that I've worked the hardest on uh, don't have very many views. So. You know, it's just one of those things. And ironically, one of the uh, reviews, my Gyo Tokyo Fish Attack review, was one of the reviews I worked the least on. And it skyrocketed in popularity in comparison to most of my videos. It was my second most viewed video on this channel with like 1,300 views. That's insane. But whatever, I'm going to do this so that I can cover more anime and... Hopefully this works out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed just hearing me, you know, spitballing and talking about the show and giving my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to rate this for obvious reasons. Just know that I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I will see you guys on the next quest for anime. And actually, before I sign off here, um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of misdirection. Um... Go ahead and if there's any anime you want to recommend or want me to watch or want me to cover, go ahead and comment below. I'm small enough at this point to where I can still, you know, get to other people's shows and give my opinions on them. Uh, if I don't finish it, I'll either just reply to some of your comments giving my basic opinion on why I couldn't finish it. Or maybe I'll make a video or maybe I'll make a whole video based on the whole thing. But either way, I'm just letting you know if you have any recommendations, anything you want me to cover, I might get to it. And uh, I will see you guys on the next Quest for Anime.